If you are new to 3D, you probably didn't know that Photoshop was an absolutely essential tool in any professional production, whether it be in film or video game development studios. It was mainly used for concept art, matte painting, and texturing. Yes, texturing wasn't done in Blender, Max, or Maya. Photoshop was able to deliver relatively good results, especially back at the time. But as the requirements of making 3D assets and environments increased, 3D artists started to hit a wall, especially those working at Wada Digital. So Wada Digital developed a 3D painting software called Mari to handle extremely detailed assets like those in Avatar in 2009, which required unprecedented number of high-resolution textures. So how did they do that? And how this painting software changed the 3D industry forever? Like many other great software, Mario began as an in-house software at Wada Digital, born out of necessity during the production of King Kong in 2005. At the time, texturing artists faced limitations of 2D painting tools like Adobe Photoshop, especially when working on ultra-high resolution textures, up to 8K textures, for different 3D models, and this was a lot, especially back in the day. As you can imagine, painting directly on flat UV maps in Photoshop was cumbersome, especially for giant characters like Kong, and the software struggled with both size and the number of maps required. What a steam often had to split the model surface into hundreds of smaller 4K texture patches just to paint it in pieces, then manually fix seams between them. This workflow was error-prone and inefficient, highlighting a concern of quality, which makes sense. As Jack Grizzly, Wada Digital's lead developer on Mari recalled, existing painting software simply didn't scale up to the detail level Wada needed. In fact, before Mari, painting software could only handle a handful of maps at once, whereas Wada's project demanded working with dozens or even hundreds of 8K maps simultaneously, a task essentially impossible in Photoshop at the time. These challenges compelled Wada to engineer a new texturing software, and they did this from scratch. If you're wondering what the name Mari means, it is derived from the Swahili word Maridari, meaning beautiful, and also connoting useful. Mari's goal was simple, that is to let artists paint directly onto a 3D model in real time, which was revolutionary and unheard of at the time. The least you can say about it is that it was a game changer. So instead of the old-fashioned method of painting flat textures, and constantly reapplying them to a 3D object, 3D artists could rotate, zoom, and paint on 3D models as if it were a physical object. Painting in contacts on a 3D surface eliminated distortions and seam issues, to a certain extent, and vastly sped up the creative process. During King Kong, Wada experimented with Mari's early capabilities, and by the time James Cameron's Avatar in 2009 went into production, Mari had become an indispensable tool in the VFX industry. So Avatar pushed Wada's pipeline to new heights. This is because the film required some 2.5 million texture maps for its slash environments and characters, which pushed it to its limit. Many assets, like the massive home tree and various creatures, needed extreme detail up close, meaning hundreds of 4K and 8K texture tiles, or UDIMs, per asset. What is existing tools simply couldn't handle that volume and resolution efficiently, so Mari's development was driven by texture department's requirements to handle this massively complex and highly detailed workload on Avatar. After proving itself internally on films like King Kong and Avatar, Mari caught the attention of the wider VFX industry, so in 2010. The foundry acquired Mari from Wada Digital, hiring Jack Reesley and the original development team to continue its development as a commercial product. By the time of this acquisition, Mari had already made a name for itself at Wada, and it was also used in other projects like District 9 in 2009, and The Lovely Bones in 2009 as well, and other studios were eager to get their hands on it. The foundry's plan was to polish Mari for a broader user base, and integrate it into a range of pipelines. This might sound odd, but Mari 1.0 was initially for Linux only, as it was released to the public in 2010. 
followed by a Windows release in 2011 to reach more artists and have a wider range of client base. Over the next several years, the Foundry rapidly expanded Mari's features while maintaining its core performance and strengths. Around 2010 and 2011, the Foundry struck a deal with Disney to incorporate some of their proprietary 3D paint innovation into Mari. This included support for Disney's BTEX system, which allows you to texture without using UVs. We actually talked about it in a previous video, if you want to see all the details. In exchange, Disney engineers joined Mari's advisory board, guiding its development. This collaboration indicated Mari's growing importance, even for Disney. By 2012, Mari was adapted to the needs of game developers and small studios. Mari 1.5 introduced features requested by LucasArts and other early adopters, like overlapping UV support, one-click export to Autodesk Maya, real-time shadow previews, direct acts, and DDS environment maps in the viewport for LookDev, and even the ability to import Photoshop brushes just to be familiar. All these updates were aimed at making Mari more accessible and integrated outside of Weta's specific pipeline. Also, in the mid-2010s, as PBR workflows became standard, the Foundry added a material system to Mari, allowing artists to paint with physically-based materials and smart presets, like using multi-channel materials such as rusty metal that lay down, diffuse, roughness, normal, all at once. And by incorporating shaders from V-Ray, in addition to Arnold, 3D Lite, and Unreal, etc., Mari enabled what is called what you see is what you get kind of painting for modern look dev. After 10 years of hard work, Mari's impact was formally recognized in 2016, when the Academy of Motion Picture Arts and Sciences honored its development with a scientific and engineering award, which shows how important it has become. So a decade after its inception, Mari pretty much established itself as an industry standard tool. On the other hand, the foundry, the company behind it, positioned itself as a company that is good at hunting innovations when it comes to 3D software and other creative programs, such as New from Digital Domain and Katana from Sony, in addition to Moto, which is one of the best 3D software out there. Besides Avatar and other major productions, Mario was quickly embraced by major VFX studios worldwide. Its ability to paint without limits, compared to using Photoshop, made it ideal for the increasingly ambitious films that we saw in the 2010s, especially during the Marvel era. London-based studios like Framestore and Double Negative were early testers of Mari, as well as Animal Logic, Method Studios, Digital Domain, and others, often in parallel with what has continued use. For example, VFX studio called Base Black adopted Mari on Harry Potter and the Deathly Hallows in 2010 to texture Dumbledore's tomb, finding that the tool let them achieve realism even on minimalistic assets, which is a great test. By 2013, Framestore had fully integrated Mari into its pipeline and used it extensively on Alfonso Cuaron's Gravity in 2013, a project involving numerous large-scale spacecraft and satellite assets. In my opinion, the film was so realistic, it is basically impossible to tell which is 3D and which is not. Framestore's head of texturing noted that gravity had too many large-scale assets, requiring elaborated UV layouts that could not have been done with other texturing software, especially at the time. From that point on, Framestore relied on Mari for essentially all hero assets. As one senior artist put it, it is the only package that lets you paint on such enormous heaps of geometry without lag. 99% of the time, you are on Mari on most shows. Over the last decade, Mari has been used on virtually every major VFX film in some capacity. ILM adopted Mari for projects like Star Wars The Force Awakens in 2015, where it was used to paint the intricate textures of the Millennium Falcon and other props. Wada Digital, of course, continued to use Mari for its subsequent films, like the Hobbit trilogy, the Avengers, a lead of the Battle Angel, and more. Other examples span the range of different genres and studios, like MPC and Double Negative, that used it on Harry Potter and the Fantastic Beasts series, also ILM on Marvel Films and Jurassic World, and practically any film with complex features, costumes, or environments. 
Mari became essentially favored for characters and organic assets, where artists need to find control over painting details like skin, scale, wear and tear, etc. across many texture maps, like hundreds or even thousands. But Mari's use isn't confined to characters and 3D assets though. It is also heavily used for large-scale environments. A good example is Blade Runner 2049, where Frame Store used Mari to paint the sprawling, dystopian cityscapes. Also, the ruined Las Vegas, in Tras Mesa environments, contained thousands of buildings and props. The texture artist deployed Mari for all the hero surfaces, from desert rocks to neon-lit building facades, because of its ability to handle extreme resolutions and variant textures in context. According to the team, any asset covering more than a tiny percentage of the screen was actually textured in Mari to ensure fidelity on the big screen. And the fact is, Mari's role on such big projects helped it solidify its position and reputation. And nowadays, Mari is the go-to texturing tool for high-quality and high-resolution VFX work, even when newer tools might be used for quicker or lower-resolution tasks. For instance, some studios blend procedural texturing using software such as Substance Painter for background assets, but Mari remains irreplaceable, especially for the heavy lifting on ultra-detailed assets. And there you have it, guys. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. You can also check some of our previous videos. Thank you very much for watching, and I will see you in the next one.